Sakar mi po ang toa? brother of Piyama. Hmm. Ikan liman niya nga po ikat. Tom na. Brother, oh, brother James. Hello, brother. Oh, hello, hello, hello. Uh, oh, I'm sorry, Mimi. Oh, you can. Has oh, joined. Okay. 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 Some some of our members are still joining. Uh, Sister Salome also joined. And Sister Tanpui, Sister Mali. How many of us are now? Uh, Eleven. Okay, brother Zawa, can we start now? I think it's good. Oh, yeah. If you don't mind, yeah. Okay. This, yeah. <laughs> okay, Sorry. let's start. Okay. Uh, yeah. Some of our friends might be still busy. Uh, anyway, let's hope they they can they will join anytime. So, uh, good evening, brothers and sisters. Uh, it's a very wonderful time to have you here once again. And greetings to all of you in the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. So, this evening I chose uh, a very short Bible verse from the book of uh, Colossians, chapter 4, from verse 2 to 6 only. It's uh, just a few lines, a few sentences. Uh, it's around uh, 
seven or eight lines only. So it's a very short passage. So <clears throat> tonight I chose this one. Uh, this uh, this these verses have a topic called uh, in some of the versions it called it is called instructions. In Mizau in Mizau Bible it says fuina, uh, uh, which is a kind of exhortation also. So this is an exhortation, at the same time it is an ex instructions for the Christians. So, <clears throat> okay, let uh, first let me read the Bible the verses from uh, from the book of Colossians chapter four, verse two to six. Let me read first, and then after that we'll have the prayer. Okay. <clears throat> Okay, and tonight I chose the uh, from the New King James Version. I'm taking from, I, I take out this verse from the New King James Version, even though there are so many other versions of the Bible, and even though they all focus on the same, uh, the same goals. Uh, what they're trying to say is the same, the same goals, but I, I chose this one because I, I like some of the words, the way it was written. I like the wording, so I chose this verse, New King James Version. So if you have the New King James Version, the, all the wording will be similar with my mine. And uh, if you are not using the New King James Version, like uh, if you are using NIV or a King James Version or the Good News Bibles or some other Bible, some of the wording may be a little bit different. I want to say that they're all uh, focusing on the same goal. But let me let me let's start reading the Bible, okay? Colossians chapter four, verse two to six. Continue earnestly in prayer, being vigilant in it with thanksgiving. Meanwhile, praying also for us that God would open to us a door for the word to speak the mystery of Christ, for which I am also in chains, that I may make it manifest as I ought to speak, walk in wisdom towards those who are outside, redeeming the time. Let your speech always be with grace, seasoned with soul, that you may know how you ought to answer each one. Okay, those, that, that is the verse. May God bless his holy words. Amen. Let us bow down to God in prayer. Our Heavenly Father, God, once again, thank you so much for this wonderful evening, for giving us this wonderful time together to study your Bible. Father, as we come together here uh, through online, since the physical gathering is not possible these days, Father, we pray that you will bless our time. You will bless the words that we are going to learn together this evening. Father, we pray that we, we pray and ask for your presence and your guidance. Give us wisdom so that we will be able to understand the true meaning of your words. Father, we pray we committed our time and ourselves to you once again. Father, bless each and every one of us with every single words that we discuss and learn together this evening. And as we come together here, Lord, uh, we also remember our friends, our brothers and sisters who are uh, affected by this uh, COVID. Brother, Father, we pray that you will be with them wherever they are right now. Father, we pray for their healings. We pray for your spiritual comforts. Father, we pray that all the, uh, the members and Anyone from the EUs and EGF who are affected by this COVID will be healed and uh, cured at the right time. Father, we pray for each and every one of them. And also, Father, we pray that you've been given us uh, amidst all this uh, pandemic and restrictions. That we thank you for allowing us to serve you in this way. And as we come together here tonight, Father, once again, we committed our time and ourselves to you. Uh, be with us with the Holy Spirit. Give us your wisdoms so that we may understand and we will be, our faith will be strengthened once again. In Jesus' precious name we pray. Amen. 
Okay, uh, so we have uh, read out the verses from uh, Colossians uh, chapter four, verse two to six. Uh, first, as uh, we usually do, usually do in the Bible study, we will go first to the observation. Uh, we will have, we will do the observation first. And I want all of you to have a response as quick as possible. Uh, don't keep silence. If you have uh, something to say, just unmute yourself and speak up, okay? So that we will spend less time. And since it is a very short verses, I, I think uh, we will finish in a very short period of time. Okay, this is the observation. Uh, my observation for observations, number one, who are the Colossians? Since we are going to learn uh, uh, some verses from the book of Colossians, who are the Colossians? A anyone knows who are the Colossians? Is there anyone who wants to respond on that? Who are the Colossians? And anyone knows the location of the Colossians? Is it still exist? Is it just a myth or uh, it's a uh, the physical, the geographical location is also existed in somewhere in the on the earth. Anyone knows? Okay. Uh, <clears throat> since I'm using the mobile phone, I it's a little bit difficult to read out the chat box so if someone can speak up and uh, that would be very nice okay uh, colossians are colossians is a colossians are the people of the city of colossa colossi they call it colossi uh, colossi is a small region city new uh, it's just nearby laodicea which is just uh, a few miles from ephesus which is in the, in the Asia Minor, which is inside the Middle East. So, Colossa, Colossa is a small city, okay? And number two, who wrote the letter and to whom it was written? Who wrote the letter of these Colossians? Anyone knows? Uh, better it's by Paul and Timothy. Okay. Thank you. Thank you so much. Okay. It was uh, written by the Apostle Paul and Timothy. Okay. Together they wrote this one, this uh, letter. Okay. <clears throat> then at the time of this uh, letter, where is the writer? From where is the writer, the writer wrote this uh, letter? Anyone knows? Where is the writer at the time of this letter was written? Anyone knows? Uh, he was at prison in Rome. Okay. Okay, very good. Thank you. Who is that? Uh, Brother Zotea. Okay, Brother Zotea. Thank you so much. Okay. Uh, Paul was actually... Some, some, yeah, most people think that... Uh, Paul was at the time uh, in the prison at Rome during his first imprisonment. And there are also some scholars uh, who have uh, another suggestion like it was written from Caesarea or Ephesus, from the city of Ephesus, okay? But uh, most people, most uh, theologians believe that uh, he wrote it from the city of Rome during his first imprisonment. Okay. <clears throat> okay, uh, the next one. Uh, why did he wrote a letter to Colossians? Why did Paul wrote this letter to Colossians? Do you have any uh, idea on that? Why did he wrote this letter? What is the cause of this? I mean, the reason of writing this letter. What makes him write this letter? Okay, anyone wants to respond on that? 
there there could be many reasons but you can you can you can say one point or so uh, in colosseum at that time a new church was uh, started and mm -hmm. there is a wrong teaching gnostic teaching okay okay, okay. false teaching okay yes Thank false you. teaching mm. anyone else that is one point false teaching very good any other points uh uh yes in uh, in addition to refuting the false teachings mm, uh -huh. he was also uh, teaching them that christ is sufficient for salvation and nothing mm. needs to be added mm. good good okay excellent anyone else any other points why did paul wrote these letters to the colossians there has to be some reasons with no reasons he will not write a letter it's a long letters you know <laughs> there could be many other reasons right okay uh, so we have uh, we have heard two beautiful points okay uh, there could be also another point like the first one is like uh, brother zote has said false teaching okay a colossa seems this a colossi uh, seems to have uh, mixed Christianity with elements of Greek philosophy, okay? Uh, the, 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 the pagan philosophy, which is advocated by the false teachers in policy, seems to have included this, uh, like, you know, the elements of, they call it asceticism, okay? Which, is, which means uh, self-torture, okay? Uh, you know, like when we spend the, Good Friday, you know, some people used to inflict pain on themselves and they thought that it will make sense. It will, you know, it, it will please God, you know, but Paul says that those things are unnecessary uh, elements. So asceticism is also one thing that, that is a part of the false teaching, okay? And the, the second is, the, according to some theologians, they say that, uh, some some teachers uh, wanted to introduce afresh the Jewish law uh, that uh, the the Jews the Jewish uh, teachings you know the very strict rules of the Jewish teachings like uh, circumstances and the restrictions on on foods you know all those things they wanted to introduce those things since they are following the uh, Christianity is from the Jewish people, you know, so uh, they're trying to do it like that. So, but Paul says that those things are not necessary. Those things are not the top priorities in Christianity. So that is uh, uh, one of the case. And the other thing is that uh, there were many angelic beings and Christians who are required to venerate and to appease, you know. So this is also from the false teachings. Uh, according to according to Bible, you know, angels are not angels are only God's servants and messengers. And some people, some false teachers, they 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 teach the Christians, those Christians, to worship angels instead of Jesus Himself. Okay, so those kind of teachings are also there. So that is why. Uh, this uh, Pastor Paul and Timothy has wrote such a long, long letters. Okay, those are the things. Uh, those are the reasons. Okay, <clears throat> let's go to the another point of observation. Uh, the third, uh, the fifth one is, what are the actions? What are the verbs that we have found from these verses, from verse two to six? Anyone? Anyone who can guess? What are the accents we found from this verse two to six? How many accents have we seen? Pray, okay. This is the term we say, pray. Okay, pray, praying. Okay, anyone else? Devote. Devote, okay, devote. Okay, devote. We can put that one, that praying and devote together in one place also. 
And anyone else? Any point? Any other points of uh, actions? Any any actions? Any uh, kind of verbs from the word? Open. Open. Okay. Open. Open is also action. Okay. Any other point? Any other verb? Any other action? Okay, speak, speak. Okay, walk also, walk, walk. Any more, any more points? Any more points of uh, action? <clears throat> proclaim. Proclaim, oh, okay, proclaim also, yes. Proclaim, maybe that's from another version. We are, we are using, I'm using this a new King James version, okay? Okay, Brother Zava also says proclaim, same, okay. Any, any more any more any more words no no okay no more right okay okay let's hope we find all the all the accents now okay those are the accents we found from here okay okay then number six uh the observation number six how many metaphors did you did, did you see here from the verse from this uh Five verses, uh, examples, you know, metaphor, examples, something that is uh, parallel with the, uh, the real one, you know. Okay, change, okay, change, change, change came here as a prison, you know, I'm in chains, mean I'm in prison, like that, okay, that is also a metaphor, okay. Any, any other words? Seasoned with salt, yes, yes. Seasoned with salt is the country. Okay, any more? Door, okay, door. Okay, door can also be, okay, good, very good. It can also be a metaphor, yes. Mm, any more? Any more metaphor that uh, the writer has used? Have we seen any other more, any more, any more metaphor? Okay, maybe that, that far we found, right? Okay, <clears throat> uh, you know, uh, mystery, mystery can also be a metaphor. It, it may also be. Grace can also be a metaphor. I don't know exactly, but maybe. Okay, anyway, it, it doesn't harm. Uh, <clears throat> let's hope it doesn't harm anything with that. Okay. Let that be an observation, okay? We have uh, so many observations now. Now we know, uh, you know, what is uh, what is the intentions and what is the focus and uh, and the main, the major subject of the letter of Colossians from this short verses only, also, right? So after knowing that. Now we'll go, we will dig deeper to the interpretations, okay? Okay, <clears throat> now we'll go verse by verse to the interpretation. And at the same time, from each verse, we will also go to the applications, okay? Uh, <clears throat> let's start with uh, verse number two. Verse number two says, continue, earnestly in prayer, being vigilant in it with thanksgiving. So uh, for the interpretation of this uh, <clears throat> verse, the ancient Greek word translated continues as uh, built on a root to be strong, you know? So continue means to build something very strong on the root. 
and it it always cannot uh, cannot harness adherence to a person or thing, and this passage also implies persistence. In some other in some other version, it instead of using this earnestly, it, it used the words persistence. So earnestly is also persistence. And this sort of earnest prayer is important, but does not come easy, you know. So honesty in prayer speaks of great effort, great effort that's steadily applied. Uh, that means uh, honest prayer means honest prayer means with great effort we have to pray. Not not easy praying, okay? With honest prayer means with great effort. With all our might, with all our mind, we have to pray like that. And <clears throat> uh, in the Greek word, it uh, literally means, I mean, this uh, vigilant. It means wakeful. The word vigilant means wakeful. In other version also, it says alert, which means uh, here it says be, being vigilant or be alert like that which means Paul is telling them to not to go to sleep when they pray, you know? So maybe some people used to pray and, you know, they are they're becoming very sleepy and, and they, they sleep away, you know? So instead of uh, giving the alertness, the vigilance, they just pray and very sleepy, become fall asleep and they just forget to continue also. That it happens, you know? So maybe Paul knows that. So he wrote this this one, he put it in his letter. And at the end it says, Thanksgiving. Thanksgiving. It means our prayers should be mingled with praise. You know, in most of our, our prayers, you know, most of the prayers is for asking God something we need, something we want. But here, Paul has one teach us to start with thanksgiving. So this, this particular verse says that we have to pray with great effort and we have to be alert. If we pray, we should not fall asleep. And we should also include thanksgiving, not just asking God what we need, what we want. So that is the point, okay? So <clears throat> that is the interpretations. And, but how do we apply this one? How can we apply? It? We will share together this one, okay? Let's share together how we, how we can apply all these points. Do we, do we need to apply and do we need to teach a fresh? Do we think that we need to be teach like this? Okay, anyone who wants to share how we can apply this particular verse into our life? Hello? Oh, hello. Okay. Uh, <clears throat> uh, looking to the second part, uh, being vigilant in it with thanksgiving. Uh, as uh, Brother James had uh, already mentioned that, not to be like uh, asleep. Or, and uh, actually, I, I, I do not have my Bible, but, <laughs> so I was reading by my Mizo Bible, and oh. it writes, Long to Chung Yun Ngai Ven Rau. So, I think we have to clear about uh, whom uh, we pray for. I think we have to clear and know really well about uh, the prayer point so that we may able to like uh, pray uh, with all our heart and with thanksgiving and uh, to know about it. Uh, so many a times so, uh, we just pray for some points and do not like think it anymore 
So we do not know whether God has uh, have answered our pray- prayer or not. So, so many times we pray like that. So I think to know uh, clearly about our prayer point is uh, really important. Thank you. Okay, thank you, brother. Uh, may I ask all of you uh, just to raise your just to raise your hands like this? Okay, uh, raise your hand like this, or you will find the, the button uh, there. Uh, have you ever, you know, fall asleep while praying in your lifetime? Uh, not today, not not recently, also. <laughs> Maybe many years back. Anyone ever fall asleep? while praying and forgot to say amen also, just wake up in the morning like that. Have you ever fall asleep with your prayer while praying? Have you experienced that one? <laughs> Anyone? Okay. Uh, five of them have uh, raised their hands. Okay. If we tell the truth, yes, it happens sometimes because, uh, you know, some people, sometimes we walk very hard at daytime and very sleepy and, you know, so Paul knows that. It, it also happens to the people of Colossae, 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 and the Colossian people also experience the same thing, okay? So God, that is why God, Paul has uh, told them not to fall asleep, to be alert and to be vigilant, you know? So, okay, very important. Okay, we go to the next verse. Uh, verse number three is, uh, meanwhile, praying also for us that God would open to us a door for the word to speak the mystery of Christ, for which I am also in chains. So that is the second one. Uh, <clears throat> here, Paul seemed to say, as long as we are on the subject of prayer, he asked them to pray for them. He said, please pray for us. One thing remarkable is that Paul didn't ask this uh, prayer for his personal needs. That is very important. He didn't ask them to pray for his personal needs. You know what he asked for? He prayed. He, he, he asked them to pray for him, for the ministry. He, he, pray, he, he asked them to pray for them, but not for his personal needs, but for the ministry that he's going to carry on. He, he asked them to pray that a door, a chance will be open so that uh, the word of God will be, you know, preached out to the people. And to speak the mystery of Christ. Here he is using the mystery of Christ. The mystery of Christ means, anyone knows what is the meaning of mystery of Christ? Anyone who can who can add on this? Is there anyone who knows the mystery of Christ? What, what did he mean by the mystery of Christ? Okay, please, anyone? Anyone who wants to contribute any idea? Why did he use mystery? Uh, brother, can I answer shortly? Yes, yes. Well, I his mystery is the mystery because uh, how can a God who uh, created the world, uh, who is almighty and you know who is self sufficient on his own, mm-hmm. uh, come the lion? He is the lion of Judah, and how can he come as a lamb to be slain? That's mm-hmm. the mystery. I think salvation that that salvation itself is. A mystery. Uh, uh, I think uh, that is why Paul is saying that. Uh, to me, that is how I, I see this part mystery of Christ. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Thank you, sister. V- very true, very true. That's correct. And and it, it can also be, means, you know, uh, it simply means uh, the story of Christ, but it can be, it can also be a mystery for those who don't know clearly about Jesus Christ, okay? Because he had done so many miracles, the way he died, the way he, he resurrected is also something very strange, isn't it? So that's why the mystery of Christ means uh, the story of Christ. And it, in one word, it will be uh, the gospel, you know. Uh, 
to speak the gospel. It means to, to speak the gospel. And the Bible says, uh, the verse says, to speak the mystery of Christ. That will mean, in short, to speak the gospel, okay? The mystery of Christ means the story of Christ or the gospel. Okay, <clears throat> thank you, sister. And so when Paul requests the people of the Colossa to pray for him, he only asks for that, not for his personal needs. And even though he was uh, isolated in prison, he still wanted to proclaim the gospel. So, for which I am also in chains, means he is still in chain, he is still in prison. So, prisons or this uh, keeping chains doesn't stop him from proclaiming the Gospels, okay? So, when I, when I uh, learn about these things, I, you know, even though they are still here, Brother Philip and Brother uh, Sister Salome, even though we are locked down and locked up in our respective houses, they keep doing, their, they're still continuing their work, okay? So it's very nice, very wonderful. So same thing happens here. Paul, even though he was in prison, he was chained, he was supposed to just, you know, sleep and keep quiet, but he doesn't. He was still continuing his work. He didn't, he, nothing stopped him, actually. So. That is the, the point, okay? <clears throat> so that is the case. And how can we apply in our life this one? We might be not in prison exactly like him, but somehow we are in chains or somehow we are in so many burdens, but we can still proclaim, right? right? So anyone who wants to add on this, any application, anyone who knows, any idea? How can we apply in our life? Yes, uh, <clears throat> as Brother James has rightly pointed out, <clears throat> uh, uh, yes, when we look at the life of Paul, he was in chain, he was in jail, and uh, that was where, you know, he will uh, keep preaching, he will keep sharing. One, uh, they have the guard uh, coming for the sentry, the guards will come and guard them and he will keep sharing, sharing, sharing and they will give their lives to the Lord and then another, you know, batch will come, he will keep sharing, 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 they'll come to know the Lord and so uh, that we see in the book of Acts also. So likewise, I think for even what we can apply that in our lives also, <clears throat> we may be uh, in lockdown, we might be in, you know, or in curfew or whatever, we are confined in a room, in a house, in our locality. But as long as we have the desire, as long as, you know, there is willingness, it's nothing can stop us. We can just go, uh, you know, there, there is a tendency, oh, students are writing exams, we should not uh, disturb them. Actually, exam is the time uh, they, they need the encouragement the most, so students. So we, just to find out when do they have exams and, you know, after, okay, by this time they will finish their exams and then send message, I'm praying for you and after the exam gets over, just call them up and ask how how did you write your exam how did it go you know and then uh, some will be disappointed uh, saying that oh the question was tough and i could not do well and, and that is the time we can just pray for them and they feel so comforted and encouraged so there is 
you know, no boundary, in fact. As long as we have the desire, as long as we have the burden, uh, there is always, uh, I mean, many ways where we can, uh, we may be chained, we may be in lockdown, but then uh, we can still make a way to uh, continue the work. Yeah, thank you. Okay, thank you, brother. Any anybody wants to add more? Uh, quickly, maybe I will just share one uh, example for all of us. Uh, you know, one of the greatest inspirations for me uh, here in uh, like coming to Isol, one of the greatest inspirations for me uh, and even my family is the, you know, the praying life of Sister Lavi, uh, Pusam's daughter. Uh, it's so amazing that she never take it as like, uh, you know, a burden. Uh, rather, with all the uh, struggle she may have, uh, yet her life of prayer is always consistent and strong. And so, like... Uh, uh, I'm sure all of many of us are doing that also. Whenever we have concerns to pray for, we will text her and she will pray without fail. So, like even in the like the, the first points that brother pointed out, and even here also, uh, it is such an encouragement for for us as a family, for me personally. Uh, nothing can stop uh, when we have the willingness and the desire to pray. Nothing can stop. Whatever circumstance and situation we may be in, we can still pray. And uh, how God has been using Mr. Lavi in a very powerful way, that has been such a blessing. So I believe uh, whether we are in difficulty or uh, whatever circumstance, we can still pray and God can do uh, mighty works through our prayers also, I believe. Thank you. Okay, thank you, sister. Okay, we will proceed to the next one, okay? Uh, verse number four. Uh, verse number four is uh, just an additional line to this uh, verse number three. Uh, it says that I may make it manifest as I ought to speak. Here, uh, even though Paul was in chains for his faithfulness to the gospel, he knew that he ought to speak uh, in a way that would make it manifest, you know? to make it clearly evident that God is really exists and he can really save us. So uh, Paul wanted the prayer that he would continue to make the gospel clear and evident. Even though if he continued to speak or if he continued to preach, you know, uh, they may give him more change also. They may extend his uh, imprisonment period also, but he didn't care. That's the point. Okay. so. <clears throat> That is uh, what uh, uh, verse number four has talked about. It's a complement of uh, verse number three. It, it's the continuation of number three. And so we'll just move on to the number five, verse number five. Uh, verse number five says, uh, <clears throat> walk in wisdom towards those who are outside, redeeming the time. Here, like uh, we have uh, already, already talked in the, during the observations that, uh, you know, walk is also a metaphor. It means uh, a steady way of life that is headed in a particular direction. Walk means just, it's not a random walk, okay? It's, uh, it's a walk headed towards a particular direction. And wisdom also means the, a focus on the goal, Jesus Christ. Uh, which uh, not to be influenced by false teacher, but to influence them all. That's what it, it's talk about. The meaning of this uh, word is that uh, walk, in, walk in wisdom towards those who are outside, redeeming the time means having a, you know, ha having a clear focus towards Jesus, in such a particular direction and 
like we have said earlier, there, there were so many false teachers. So we can also be influenced by those false teachers. But here, he says that with all wisdoms, we should not be influenced by them, but we have to influence them with the right teaching. And when Paul says that, says that we are to walk with wisdom towards outsiders, he means that we are to live in line with God's word so that those who are not Christians will see the beauty of our lives and relationships that reflect Jesus Christ. And we are also to make effective use of our time. Some translations interpret this phrase as making the most of every opportunity. Every moment of life is important and should be maximized in service to Christ. So Paul wants us to be, to walk with wisdom with those outsiders and to grab all the opportunity. Redeeming the time means uh, to grab the opportunity. We should not, we cannot miss the opportunity. So that is what Paul is trying to say. So <clears throat> is there any idea who wants to add on this? On the meaning and the applications in life? How can be? How can we have wisdom? I am so, you know, ignorant, and I. We may say that I am not wise. I'm not a wise person. But how can I be wise? We may have such kind of questions. So how can we come? How can we become wise? You know, <laughs> any 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 idea? We just cannot be wise man. Okay, in just a few seconds, we cannot become a wise man. But here Paul says that walk in wisdom towards those who are outside. How can we be wise in just a matter of time? <laughs> Any idea? Is there anyone who wants to contribute? Any idea? Uh, you know, Paul has want us to walk in wisdom means you have to be wise you, you you cannot be stupid you know but how can we be wise in in a matter of time i think <clears throat> uh being sensitive uh to the guidance of the holy spirit uh, I think that is also will come uh, will come uh, mostly like mainly here talking about uh, you know making the best use of our opportunity in reaching out to our friends from other faiths or uh, people who are not serious in the Lord you know were born Christian but far away from the Lord. So uh, being sensitive and I think uh, how, how can I be relevant to them? How, how to make him, you know, uh, how to create an atmosphere where he or she will open up and, you know, uh, I mean, to create that comfortable atmosphere where we can share the gospel. I think that is so much to do with uh, so much to do with uh, being sensitive to the guidance of the Holy Spirit. Uh, that you know, prayerfully, uh, uh, you know, like allowing God the Holy Spirit. I think that will also come being wise. Holy Spirit will definitely give us wisdom. You know how to move ahead in approaching or in sharing the gospel. Uh, thank you. Yes, I believe uh, uh, that is a very important point. And yes, uh, not simply sharing the gospel out of burden, just being so passionate and you know, blurt out everything. 
uh, I, I think it's uh, not to be in that way, but wisely, uh, carefully, lovingly, and passionately at the same time, uh, so that make the most of every opportunity. Let each and every step be uh, a step to win over that person, uh, the soul of the other person who are from outside the fold of God. Uh, yeah, as Brother Philip pointed out, Holy Spirit's wisdom and guidance. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Thank you, brothers and sisters. Uh, yes, Holy Spirit, uh, be, by being sensitive to the Holy Spirit, by uh, receiving the guidance from the God. And Sister Tanqui says, uh, fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. Okay, that is also a good point. And Sister Ang Yi says, uh, we can ask God uh, from the book of James chapter one, uh, if anyone has lack of wisdom, he can ask and God will give them, you know? So those are the, the, the promise is there. So those are the thing. And <clears throat> very important, they are, yes, they are all applicable. They are all true. They are all applicable. We very biblical also. And, <clears throat> Like uh, we have uh, already mentioned, walk in wisdom means heading towards one particular goal, okay? one particular direction. That is the, the salvation of Jesus Christ. Okay, if as long as as long as we we walk towards the story of Christ, the salvation of Christ, and if our message and the way we speak is all focused towards Jesus Christ. We will never be a fool. That's what Paul is trying to say, trying to tell us, you know, if we want to be a wise man, we will be a wise man as long as we are focusing on the target, on the, on the goal of Jesus. And, you know, there are many people who goes beyond the Bible and, you know, they they add on their speech and on their messages, they add too many of their self opinions, their self philosophy. You know, if they add too much, they are becoming a you know a laughing stock. People laugh at them. You know, so as long as we focus on the same the one direction, the story of Christ and the salvation of Christ, and if our focus is one on that particular directions, we will never be a fool. So that is very important. Okay, and that, I think that way we can uh, apply in our life also. Okay, the last one, uh, the last one is, uh, it's a verse number six. Let your speech always be with grace, seasoned with salt, that you may know how you ought to answer each one. Uh, let me mention again, I'm using this a New King James Version. Uh, if you're not using the New King James Version, they are sen sentencing your, you know, wording may be a little bit dif different, but I think we can keep, keep up together uh, since they all have, even though the wording is different, they all have the same goal, the same meaning. So here we, we saw grace. Let your speech always be with grace. The word grace has in Greek as in English, the possible double meaning of God's grace and human graciousness, okay? And, you know, this grace is very important. Uh, one, this is one of the effective principle of outreach is, is the idea of gracious or kind speech. Uh, gracious and kind speech is one very effective principle of outreach. And <clears throat> Paul uses the metaphor of salt here again. Uh, in Paul's days, uh, like uh, we have already heard in uh, Brother Moat Tosi's sermon message last, uh, last, uh, last week, when we have this uh, state annual conference during the devotion in the evening, he talks about, uh, he talks many things about uh, salt, the importance of salt, the, 
the, the value of salt, you know? So in those days, salt was very valuable. It, it was valuable enough to, to be used as money, as a currency, and was treasured for, for its ability to preserve and flavor foods, keeping meat from spoiling. So, you know, like uh, Brother Moa has already said last, last week, uh, during the time of uh, this uh, Romans ruling, uh, some Roman soldiers also received their monthly salary as from salt, you know, instead of currency, sometimes they receive salt for the monthly salary. So that, that far, they, that's how important it is in those days. And in the same way, a Christian speech should be very helpful and valuable and flavored different, differently from the speech of non-believers and preserving the message of Christ. So he was using the metaphor of salt to flavor our speech. You know, when we add salt in the food and, uh, you know, delicious food, it became very delicious, right? So likewise, if we flavored our speech differently from the speech of non-believers, we will preserve the message of Christ also. And here at the last sentence, it says that, that you may know how you ought to answer each one. It says, you may know how you ought to answer. That means we have to answer, you know. When, he, when the Bible says you have to answer, that means that there are so many questions. Some people used to ask questions, you know. So uh, here, if, if they were asked questions about the mystery of Christ that we have already uh, mentioned, you know, for non-believers, it's a mystery, okay? It's a mystery. The story of Christ is very strange. It's very amazing. And, uh, you know, people... Uh, you know, for the first time, they don't understand all the meaning of that. So they used to ask questions about it. So when they ask those questions, we have to answer them. We should not keep silent or we should not turn our back on them. We have to answer them. That's what Paul has told us. So we should not reject any questions. We should answer people's questions with grace and seasoned with salt. So when people ask, it may be a simple questions. It may be, you know, very stupid questions. And it may be a very boring questions. And sometimes it may be, you know, very, you know, hectic questions also. Uh, whatever questions it is, we have to answer it with grace and seasoned with salt. And grace and salt make an ideal combination. This is very important, you know, especially these days, you know, people are, you know, uh, sulking and since maybe the effect of this, uh, all this lockdown and all this economic crisis and poverty and all, people are, you know, losing their characters and uh, losing their mind and, you know, people are becoming very different. Especially in the social media also, people are sulking and, you know, they use uh, sometimes very unhealthy languages and some people are, you know, they don't respond nicely also. So it happens. But for us as a Christians, always our speech and our message should be seasoned with salt, mixed with grace, you know. So... Something very important I felt is that whenever we respond to someone, uh, if we respond with the disgrace and seasoned with salt, and besides that, you know, if we if we have uh, love in our words, if we have love to them, you know, the love from Jesus, the love from God, they cannot hate us. And they, and they will not continue to sulking also. 
So that is very important these days. I think as a Christians, we have to step out like this. So that way I felt, uh, that's why I choose this verse also. <laughs> so these days, when dealing with uh, outsiders, dealing with uh, people who are not fully born again people, you know, if our speech and response and our, our answers, our speech is seasoned with salt and grace and love, you know, I think we can easily win their heart also. I think that is the best way. I think everyone needs these days because uh, we don't know how long we're going to suffer this pandemic and people are becoming more and more suffering and uh, you know, more and more hardships came to many people and they are very sulking and they are always you know, filled with bitterness. So <clears throat> knowing all these things, I think for the Christians, especially for the preachers, especially for those who are delivering the message of God, you know, we are, we have to have, all our words have to be uh, seasoned with soul, full of grace, with love. So that's what this uh, verse number six has told us about. So uh, <clears throat> do you think it is applicable these days? Uh, can we apply in our life? Can we? How can we uh, apply in our life? So let's contribute any, if we have any idea on that. Oh, hello, brother. Yeah, let me yes. share. I won't spend much time. Uh, I may not switch on my video. Please excuse me for that. Yes, that verse six, the last verse is very important. And by the grace of God who have received Jesus Christ, I think this is applicable. I want to pick out one name of our brother, our EGF member uh, from Lung Lei. Yeah. I am very happy about his life, always encouraging to me. Yeah. Yeah. His name is like... Uh, Sarin Oma. I think most of us know he and his name. So, yeah, his speech is always full of grace. I think that's why whenever we meet, I, I was listening, <laughs> same person, and I was very blessed. Yeah, and the way he talk is very nice, and just like that, if we. Uh, offers that's a simple thing also he always um, happy and he said like that oh uh, brother just like that yeah that gives me uh, uh, some kind of uh, healing or yeah I am very happy so whenever uh, the student or the graduate ask a question also his answer was very nice because he's a humble guy and prayerful man. And once also, yeah, Sister Rebecca asked uh, about their locality. That's locality. Uh, so Sarino replied in that way. Uh, they are from Ramtarveng. So he said in the most humble way, oh, Sister, have you ever heard our, our locality? It's most time I feel shame. Uh, is from terror, we are not popular. So the the question who writes, uh, sister herself also fell back little shame. So I like that. So um, this is very important, especially this during pandemics, as many struggled as uh, brother James said, uh, due to so many things and financial problem also. So our speech is very important. Um, and as I said, uh, Sarin Oma, through Sarin Oma life also, many students in the Hetim Lungle also felt blessed and um, uh, some of them who struggled due to uh, this uh, number four or this kind of edicts also, uh, Sarin Oma requested their parents uh, to allow to stay along with him one or two months like that. So some parents sent 
uh, to Sarin Oma and um, without preaching the gospel of Christ as he himself said to me, I didn't preach anything within one month, but I pray secretly. And so God totally changed their mind just like that. Uh, I think this is very amazing. So uh, our conversation, casual conversation or formal conversation speaking, it is very important if it is full of grace uh, to our speech. Now speech, when we say it, yeah, it may not be uh, audio, uh, maybe mo mostly text messages. Uh, yeah, now verbal and nonverbal communication are uh, very relevant. So uh, through our simple messages, also if we could do like Sarinoma and our staff workers, our seniors, Uncle uh, Sam and uh, Uncle Chon, Uncle Tonga. So yeah, we can learn, I think this is, uh, very applicable. Uh, uh, with God, everything is possible. Uh, the Bible says so. Um, I think yeah, um, many may uh, change their minds or even uh, experience salvation, born again salvation experience uh, through our speech and our prayer. Thank you so much. Uh, thank you, thank you, brother. Uh, that's very inspiring. Yeah, uh, this uh, speaking with grace, speech with grace, seasoned with soul, is uh, you know something very important. But uh, frankly speaking, me also, I'm I'm the least person that who don't have this kind of thing. You know, uh, especially when I speak English, uh, it may be it may not be very gracious. You know, <laughs> very very cold and you know very stiff maybe. Uh, but when we speak to our mother, uh, mother tongue, uh, it's a little bit better, but not so good, you know, still then. So sometimes it's very, very difficult. But, uh, you know, these days I used to watch uh, one of the, one YouTuber, his name is Todd White. Uh, some of you may know it, uh, he's Todd White. His ministry is also Todd White Ministries. And he used to preach in the street and, you know, sometimes he encounter with uh, Muslims and people from other faith. and. You know, he just stopped them and asked them some questions and they're trying to debate and argue with him, you know, but he's, he, he continues speaking and telling them that he loved them and God has loved them so much. You know, he told them and with all this gracious and he looked up into their eyes and, uh, you know, with the loving sight, with uh, all the face, with love and care and, you know, and he told them that he loved them and if necessary he told you know he told them that if necessary he will die for them also like that and after saying that you know people become immediately different they don't continue to argue with him and you know at the end he asked them to pray for them and they never say no because since he's not he's not trying to argue and debate with them but he was trying to tell them just love and the grace of God and the salvation of Christ. And, you know, maybe it's very difficult to reject that kind of grace and love, even for non-believers. So the power is there, you know. By using this uh, love and grace, you know, there is uh, something, something is there. It's very powerful, more powerful than, you know, this... Uh, might and strength and this argumentative strong words you know instead of that he, he used just such kind of very simple and loving words and he just win their hearts you know so very very strange i felt very strange so if we apply this uh, number verse number six if our speech is always with grace seasoned with salt and filled with love, I think our answers to any kind of questions will be, you know, it will make sense. It will easily win the heart of the people who ask questions also. So I felt that way. <laughs> so if you experience any kind of such thing, please share and uh, you can also say some addition to that. You can add any any points. 
okay we'll open another another point for that let's continue setting on that point number six verse number six if anyone wants to add on that brother may i quickly uh, jump in here again yes i when we talk about salt i was one thing that is uh, lingering in my mind which uh, brother moa tell it that you know salt it give a pinch also it uh, it is used for cleansing the wound and all this saline we use it for dressing and all this and uh, but it's not a comfortable experience either because uh, if it's salty into a wound it's uh, it, it gives some kind of irritation at the same time so uh, i think one thing we have to be as a mature christian that we need to know is yes being gracious part I think uh, we have explained so well, but along with that, I think uh, that what we ought to answer each person according to their need, it's not being just plain nice, you know, just being nice and being, uh, you know, uh, what I'll say, <laughs> uh, refusing to rebuke or uh, refusing to point out uh, the wrong things. I think uh, that should go together. Uh, being gracious at the same time, not losing our focus, uh, that is Christ. And uh, as we have talked in the beginning about in the conversation, in the observation, the Colossians were subject to wrong preachings. It's not about other religion, but it is a wrong teaching in the church. So uh, to correct such kind of, uh, you know, wrong teaching within the church, within the Christian family, we have to be gracious. But at the same time, we should know what we ought to say graciously. And that should also give a pinch. Like when Brother Moa said that I have never heard uh, the, the metaphor of salt that in that way, that it should give a pinch. It, they, they, should, they should feel uncomfortable of the sins. They should feel uncomfortable of the wrongs that they have done. So that was the message that lingers in my mind from Brother Moa's uh, ser uh, sermon. And I just want to remind every one of us here again that uh, we do we should not lose our focus and stick to the uh, correct doctrines thank you right very nicely uh, sister has pointed out and in addition to what uh, brother james has said i also want to come in here <clears throat> so for us is for us, we are the call out ones to minister to the students as staff, as graduates. So, of course, Brother James has rightly pointed out, and in connection with what Sister Trumpy has also pointed out, yes, uh, students, our students, they have. Uh, less experience and they are they have so many limitations they think themselves smart but they are not really smart actually so that way but in order to correct them or in order to oh, you know help them out with you know correction or some kind of rebuking uh, of course, Brother James has pointed out the first thing that we should make them know that I really love you. I'm to will have to make them know that I'm praying for you and I'm interested in your life. You know, when they realize, when they come to know that we are interested in their lives and we are concerned about them and we love them, then when that is there, then even rebuking or correcting, you know, and uh, uh, that way they they listen, they will they take it uh, positively. Even there is a uh, you know a time why actually why is a very uh, very negative uh, word. Uh, which is not pleasant, but then even why, when you ask why also, 
when they know that I we love them, we pray for them, and we are concerned about their lives, their future, then they take it positively. I think that is very important thing for all of us, and also uh, like timely, timely. Uh, uh, in connection to what Sister Tampu has pointed out also, uh, being uh, gracious or, uh, 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 you know, we need to tell them and if we just, you know, allow them to you know, give them free hand and there will be a time that, you know, it will be, you know, too late. So, uh, we have to have the discernment and when to, you know, hear uh, that you may know how you ought to answer each one. So, like, uh, as we been sensitive uh, to the guidance of the Holy Spirit with much prayer, you know, timely God will also use us, you know, to help them out in 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 terms of correction or you know, uh, uh, whichever way possible. So I think as graduates, our responsibility is here, making the best use of this opportunity, you know, from other faith, yes, of course, but uh, that in our society, that also may not be, you know, always, you know, relevant uh, uh, is as a Christian state, but for us as graduates, as staff, we are called, we are specially, specifically, we are called to minister to the students. So that way, sincerely praying, persistently praying for students. I think that is a calling for each one of us. And this will be, this is, I find uh, very relevant for staff, for graduates, you know, to to ministering to the students as students as our you know our mission. Yeah, thank you. Any more? Anyone who wants to add some points on that? Thank you very much for the wonderful insight. And that's a good okay. It's uh, so easy to spend time, you know. It's already nine now. <laughs> I thought we have spent only one hour, so it's going so fast. <laughs> yeah, since since the Tanpui has uh, rightly mentioned about the you know the pinch that salt can uh, create, you know the the salt the saltiness, you know, it's very strong. And brother uh, Philip also mentioned rightly uh, the way we should apply. As, a, as an EGF, as a as a graduate, Hello. Uh, <clears throat> so that very important, yes. And like where we have uh, already mentioned earlier in the chapter uh, verse five, uh, we should not lose our directions. You know, we should stand firm in our in our direction. And since uh, this message is about you know crossing the false teachers. Those false teachers are, are going to mislead those Christians in the Colossae. So, uh, like that, you know, we should stand on our stand. And our focus will be always on the goal that we have to have. And <clears throat> here, especially, we talk about how to answer when we when we have been questions about the uh, about the gospel or the ministry or whatever uh, our response would be with grace seasoned with salt so that is very important and <clears throat> for the summary of this uh, whole context that is a whole uh, verse from two to six uh, let me conclude like this okay. Uh, God is, from verse 2 to 6, God is very concerned on our personal prayer life and also in our interaction with the world. 
So he cares about both the prayer closet and the public street. So the way we live outside and the way we 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 pray in a prayer closet. So we should care these two points. And uh, this uh, passage, yes, Brother Mark wants to share. We will call him. And um, this passage starts with a request, request for request for uh, personal prayer and then transition into a command, you know, regarding how Christians should speak. And Christian speech should be helpful and valuable, flavor different from the speech of non-believers and preserving the message of Christ. So that is what this passage is trying to tell us. So uh, when someone is crossing the line, you know, we should, of course, we should tell them it may pinch them if they go wrong, you know. You know, like uh, in our daily life also, there are traffic rules, we have traffic rules, you know. And we have uh, this uh, certain rules as a government, under the government. And it is not a problem for obedience people. But this op for these obedience people, you know, all these rules are, you know, very hectic and, you know, very noxak. You know, very noxak. <laughs> so, but for people who are, for the good people, you know, it doesn't affect our life. It's just normal. So when we speak about this uh, verse six, five, six, all these things, for people who are on the right path, you know, there is nothing wrong. There is no, no problem at all. But for those who are following the false, following the false teachings, and for those who are in the wrong path, like we have, uh, brother, uh, brother Philip has mentioned, if uh, some students are on the wrong path, you know, or on the wrong um, teachings or in the wrong way, if they go in the wrong way, we will tell them the right way, of course, with gracious and love and all. But it may pinch them when they when they realize they're uh, they're wrong, you know. So it happens. That has to be. It has to be there, you know. So, but from our side, all our speech and all our you know uh, response and answers should be with grace, love, seasoned with soul so that will be more effective instead of just scolding them with hate you know it should not be with hate <laughs> so that, that's what this the bible is telling about i think uh the the focus is clear <laughs> okay brother brother mark is uh is trying to speak up i think he can unmute very himself sorry. very sorry okay. brother james uh my i thought my mic was working earlier it wasn't I was speaking and it could not come. Sorry. Very interesting. When Brother James lead, it's always a super hit kind of session. Thank you. Uh, yeah, the last question I want to touch on uh, is um, brothers and sisters, you all have touched very important uh, points. But the last point with each other, how you ought to answer each other, I think uh, this is also the focus also should be on believers themselves when this this letter was written how believers should communicate with each other and uh, i think in our context um, this is very very important how we speak to our fellow brothers and sisters not necessarily students graduates to graduates and graduates to our elders church leaders and our church members uh, those who are in the same body of christ if there was a time when we mankind has abused words as bad as can be i think these are the times you look at the internet there are trolls all over look at how people uh, really butchered other people using their words and how they put down each other people are not uh, very merciful toward each other and i think christians are also included here and the tone of our language the words we use if we try to correct also or if we just try to communicate also i think uh, we are becoming very very militant and defensive now now, this is the culture that we live in. Let's talk about our graduates, EGF or ISOL EGF. I don't know how you talk with each other. I don't know how some of you may be very curt, very short, very commanding and 
very sulking and very uh, these are not supposed to be the Christian the Christian talk Christian talk has uh, been exemplified by brothers said should be always like that a similar case with our texting I think uh, uh, speech could also mean now in our context how we text our messages you know our uh, whatsapp message and others i've heard that some some students they don't even want to talk to, or they are so afraid of graduates or some graduates also they don't want to talk to other graduates because this this person or that person is is very careless with words and it is not nice to speak to such people because that looks like they're always in bad mood this is very shameful it shouldn't have happened when you read this bible verse again and again it should be full of humility uh, it should be full of grace it should be full of understanding and kind manners this is the way we have to talk uh, but unfortunately we are living in a world where even graduates also find difficult to talk with other graduates because that graduate always become very militant and very defensive and uh, by our nature we do not learn how to be appealing how to be more uh, sensitive to others also i think this is a lesson we all need to learn also tonight graduate to graduate the way we communicate using our words using our text and uh, i've heard instances when if we send email if we send whatsapp message if we leave a message they don't want to communicate sometimes even though they've seen the messages so such is the which means negligence which means i don't care what you're doing even though they may come and show a pretty beautiful nice face and say we are happy brother and all that but in reality the communication can always break down because of pride in their heart so as christians we should be very careful with the way let us not be militant first let us um, try to be gracious to each other let's communicate very well let us respond to each other positively and let us rebuke lovingly and kindly also. The Bible says the tongue is very, very uh, difficult to tame. I think it's in James. The tongue is difficult and in elsewhere in the Bible, it also says that the tongue can be misused. And the Bible also says out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speak it which means if you have negative, wicked thoughts in your heart, you're not going to speak nicely with your brothers and sisters, you're not. And if there be among us, anybody here who, who fall victim to such kind of issues, I think tonight should be a time for repentance. Tonight should be a time when we should open up and confess of our sins. Just one little word, one little humming, one little something that we utter from our mouth or we don't utter could break a brother's sister's heart. I think we should be very, very sensitive of that. And uh, as uh, office bearers, sometimes secretaries, this can become quite challenging because, you know, some graduates are not approachable. They don't want to speak to them because they will not respond nicely. Uh, this, because of the pride in their hearts. And this could be this, this could happen a lot also. So we have to know that Satan is trying to derail our communication and here in, uh, Colossians also, I think uh, the problem is there. Nothing new under the sun, right, Brother Philip? Uh, communication can, Satan always derails our communication, and we should be very careful about how we communicate with each other, respond in love and affection. So the last word that I pick up on is how you ought to answer each other. Be very careful how you ought to talk to your brothers and sisters. That's That's the point I want to say, Brother James. Thank you for the time. Thank you, Brother Mark. Very inspiring. Uh, Uncle Sam, do, do, you, do you have anything to say on that? Do you want to add anything on that? I think it's what he said was really correct. And, and it's very nice. You have done it very well. And it's a blessing for me also. Should be very seasoned with salt. Speech, speech should be very pleasing to their ears also. But those who are listening, that's the main thing. Yeah, that's all.
Okay, thank you, Uncle. Thank you. Yeah, <clears throat> we will come to the end of it. Uh, yes, like uh, we have heard from our members, it's so inspiring that uh, there are so many things that we have to, you know, uh, follow as a Christians. Uh, you know, like our president, Brother Mark, has uh, mentioned, uh, among ourselves also, sometimes we have to be very careful. But, uh, you know, between the very close friends, it's okay. Yeah. If we can, you know, speak a sore language also, it's okay for very close friends, you know, like myself and Mark and Zawa, sometimes we just, uh, you know, teasing each other with so many words, you know, it, it doesn't make sense really because we are very, we are close friends already. But for, uh, you know, people who are a little bit far, you know, those who are not very close to us, we have to be very careful. They they can be, it can be very sensitive. So, especially people who never knew us, we have to be very careful. Our words, our uh, response, our answers should be uh, gracious, seasoned with soul, with love, most importantly, with love, you know. And it, it's the same with our uh, fellow Christians. And also like uh, verse number five itself said, the outsider, People who are from the outside are also we have to show, we have to tell them that we have to let them know that from our from our speech it has to be gracious, seasonal, so because it can win their hearts the the easiest way. So this is very important. Okay, uh, I think uh, I think we understand uh, the meaning of the verse two to six of this Colossians chapter four. So let's hope uh, it will be a blessings for each and every one of us. I may be the one who have the most profit out of uh, this uh, Bible study, okay? Because I have uh, go deeper and read so many things because of this. So I thank you so much for Brother Zawa and Brother Opi also for giving me this uh, opportunity. Thank you so much. And thank you everyone for bearing with me, bearing with us. Uh, and before we conclude the program, we will call Brother Opia, our secretary, Aizol EGF, for announcement. And after that, uh, may I request Brother Philip, Brother Philip, to pray uh, to close uh, our Bible study. Okay, that will be the end of it. Okay, now we will call uh, Brother Opia to have announcement as uh, secretary from Aizol EGF. And after that, uh, Brother. Philip will pray and we will close uh, this uh, Bible study. Brother Opia, please. Okay, thank you so, so much, uh, Brother James, for having a wonderful uh, Bible study, uh, which was so relevant and so important for our day-to-day -day lives. And I will make a few announcements. Uh, the next, the Bible study, Isoli GF Bible study will be on the 3rd of, uh, 3rd of July, uh, which will be led by Auntie Salome, 3rd of July by Auntie Salome. And uh, we may expect a committee meeting tonight, but... Uh, in order to have uh, some more uh, free time and the time to share, time to think, uh, we may call the executive committee meeting uh, between uh, this Bible study and the next Bible study. So it means uh, the meeting will be called um, within this uh, month. And uh, the next is a registration form. Uh, we are preparing a uh, Google form uh, for registration. So we are still uh, designing and make some changes. So you please uh, remember us in your prayer so that we may be able to uh, send out this uh, report uh, registration link so that we may be able to register uh, as much as, uh, uh, as uh, all the EGFs within this area. And we also need to collect and remake so many uh, 
data, so many uh, informations regarding uh, the our statistics. So we need to uh, remake all those things. So in order uh, to make this uh, successful, please remember us in your prayer so that we may able to share the link uh, very soon. And uh, tonight uh, we, we are uh, amusing <laughs> two devices. So it's written 13. Actually, we are four. Uh, right now we are 12 in numbers. Sister Mali is out because of her network service. And Brother Jadid is also sharing in the WhatsApp group. Uh, he's uh, right now living in Sayapui and having uh, some mm, network problem. And also uh, tonight, uh, our senior advisor, uh, Uncle Sam Joseph is with us. Uh, thank you so, so much, Uncle Sam. So uh, we hope and pray uh, that you may join us uh, in the next Bible study as well. And also, uh, uh, Sister Angayi, is she still here? Sister Angayi, yes, uh, she's from Champai, as mentioned earlier. Thank you so much for joining the Isoli GF Bible study. Uh, we also request you uh, to join us again the next time. And uh, we also thank for our uh, SEC president, Brother Mark, for joining us again. And uh, our president, brother, uh, brother Zawa, in spite of having uh, difficulties uh, regarding the uh, this uh, interrupted uh, power supply today, uh, he could join. Uh, praise God for that. And uh, brother Akima from Amveng is also joining. Sister Carmelita from uh, Tuikwal is also joining. Brother Zotea is still here. He's all, right now he is in Champai. And Sister Rebecca, our coordinator from Dorpu, is also joining. Thank you so much. And uh, brother, uh, Uncle Philip and Sister Salome, uh, they are joining us again. Thank you so much for sharing all those uh, wonderful words. And also, uh, lastly, Sister Tlan Pui, she's uh, having a good sharing and telling us uh, the things that we need. Thank you so much, for, uh, every one of us, uh, for joining. And we request you and uh, pray that uh, we may be able to conduct and join together and meet together all of us again in the next uh, Bible study in the third of July. Thank you so much. Uh, that's all uh, for the announcement. Thank you. Right. Uh, uh, so we will pray. And I'm sure you are aware of uh, Remoya as uh, Pusam, Pusam's colleague, colleague and so we will give his health also uh, in, God, in, in God's hand. So we'll pray. Um, <clears throat> let's look to God in prayer. Dear Heavenly Father, we want to thank you and praise you, Lord, for giving us this wonderful opportunity of learning your word, which has come so relevant, O oh Lord, to the life of each one of us. And through Brother James, we want to thank you and praise you, Lord. And Lord, you help us. You give us, oh, the heart of Paul, O oh Lord. You give each one of us the heart of Paul, O oh Lord Jesus, to our graduates, our staff, O oh Lord, here in Mizoram. Lord, help us to be persistent in prayer, O oh Lord. Persistent in prayer with thanksgiving, O oh Lord Jesus. And help us to be alert. Paul, his whole, uh, his intention and his desire is to share your word clearly, O oh Lord, nothing else, no any other agenda, but people should come to know you clearly, O oh Lord. The gospel should be presented to them clearly. Lord, you help us to have that clear, uh, clear cut burden, O oh Lord, upon each one of us, O oh Lord Jesus. 
And according to your Lord, you use us to make the best use of this opportunity because the best time is now. The best time is now. And Lord, how many students, Lord, even in the past year, we failed on our part. We fell on our part and then many students Oh, had gone. We are not sure about the assurance of salvation. But Lord, we pray that, Lord, there will not be any regret. Lord, may your Holy Spirit lead us and guide us. And so that, Lord, we will be able to make the best use of this opportunity in reaching out, O oh Lord, to our students and to one another, O oh Lord Jesus. Father, we pray and ask you, O oh Lord, to lead us and guide us. May God, the Holy Spirit, lead us, being sensitive, O oh Lord, to the guidance. We can be sensitive to the guidance of the whole Holy Spirit only when we are in tune with you, when we are enjoying our relationship with you every single moment, O oh Lord. Then only we will be wise. Then only, Lord, we will be guided by the power of God, the Holy Spirit. And when that is there, definitely we will be able to see, oh Lord, you will take us to the right students. You will take us to the right well-wishers, oh Lord Jesus. And accordingly, Lord, we will be able to, we will be infectious and contagious, oh Lord Jesus. And accordingly, oh Lord, Ministry will, Lord, expand. Your kingdom will be extended, O Lord Jesus, here in the state of Mizoram. We want to thank you once again. We bring all the announcements, Lord, which your opiate, our secretary has made. We bring all the announcements also into your throne of grace. And we also once again pray, O Lord, and Moya, Lord, very sad. The Lord, he went to Velour with his daughter, just six years, blood cancer, O oh Lord. And then he, both of them infected, O oh Lord, with COVID positive. And Lord, he is very critical and the hope is very less now. Chance is very less, very critical. But we bring him into your throne of grace. No ventilator is of no use because there is already hole in the lung, O oh Lord. And that critical, that uh, severe is the condition. But you are sovereign and we bring him into your throne of grace. May your will be done, O oh Lord. May your will alone be done. Thank you so much, O oh Lord, for hearing our prayers. And Lord, we once again... Uh, pray and commit, O oh Lord, all the upcoming programs into your throne of grace. As this month we have set aside, O oh, to strengthen the graduates, O oh Lord. We pray that God, the Holy Spirit, will lead us. And then, Lord, as we send reminder and as we send flyer as reminder, Lord, may you uh, help the graduates to prioritize to give this in the topmost priority all the, all the Mondays and Fridays, oh Lord. And then the last part, 25th, 26, 27, oh Lord, as Bible study inductive, Bible study workshop, we bring all these programs into your throne of grace, oh Lord Jesus. This is the result of the successful annual conference that we had, oh Lord. We pray in the name of Jesus. This year, we want to see this new academy year. We want to see you taking the ministry to the next level, O oh Lord Jesus, in all aspects. We pray and commit each one of us into your throne of grace. May God, the Holy Spirit, be the center in everything that we do so that your name alone will be glorified. Your name alone will be honored. Thank you so much, O oh Lord, for hearing our prayers. And Lord, we bring all our members. Uh, who are present here, Lord, we bring all the unspoken needs also into your throne of grace. Lord, we don't know, but you know, and we bring all that, Lord, into your presence. May you answer 
may you answer, O Lord Jesus. If there is anyone who is going through hard time in a family, individually, you know everything. Lord, may your comforting spirit be upon them. And we once again commit, O Lord, everything into your throne of grace. Thank you so much for hearing our prayers. And we once again thank you for the gift of Brother James' life, the way he led us so nicely. is so encouraging, O Lord. We want your name to be glorified. Oh, thank you so much. And now as we leave this place and go back to our respective rooms or start, continue our respective works, you be with us and help us to see progress and give you all the glory and honor to you. In Jesus' precious name we pray. Amen. Thank you, Brother James. Brother James, Kalum Lutuk. Thank you, everyone. Thank you, everyone, for, for bearing with us. Brother James, so Thank inspiring. You. Thank you for Thank you. the message. Thank you. Thank you, Brother James. So good. Everyone. So it's so, you know, very difficult. Uh, frankly speaking, I'm the one who I, I realized that I was hardly smiling these days, you know. My wife also told me that you never smiled like that, you know. <laughs> and other other friends from uh, other relatives also, those who are close to me. Same here. Uh, same here. Same here. Yeah. He scolded me. I, I, <laughs> I rarely smile and, you know, mm -hmm. my, my, my face, the way we speak also too straight, you know. <laughs> Very unattractive these days. Already, I realized that. <laughs> Maybe because... We used to involve in the, this uh, KTP and all as a leader, and you know we live very straight life and never joking and hardly joking and hardly smiles. You know, <laughs> it has already in our life. So I think we have to learn again from the beginning to smile and to be friendly more. <laughs> uh, yeah. <laughs> but, and. Uh... Another announcement on the 18, on the 18 of this month, that is Friday, uh, we will be having a practical talk on open home. For that, we will encourage all the husbands and wives to be together uh, participating in the practical talk session. Husband and wife, husband and wife, like that. Thank you. Next week, right? 18, 18. Okay. Yeah. Yes, yes. So, like, for example, like Opia, if you are uh, like the singles, if you are considering someone, brother, uh, especially brother Java, if you are considering someone, you can inform them, you know, so that <laughs> to get, uh, not together, but, you know, join the program. Yeah, thank you. Uncle Sam, how's, how's Lavi now? And love is uh, better. No, she's okay. So okay. Nimi is also better by God's grace. We okay. have been praying for her. Thank mm. you very much for that. So nice to she hear. She was yeah. really bad actually earlier. She was mm. pretty bad for some time. And now she's better. Ah, yeah, it was nice, James. Yeah, you had a nice exposition. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Bye. Okay, yeah, thank you. Good night. Good night, everyone. See you tomorrow. If, uh, if you're free, you can join the service. Yes, mm. yes, Uncle. Tomorrow, tomorrow, some great artist is going to sing also. Join us. Yes. Mm. And Sister Lutei from Sifir, PUCR, oh. Lutei also will be presenting special mm. number. <clears throat> and our okay. SEC president also will be presenting. So... Let us all be there. Yeah. <laughs> Is it 11? 11 again? On day 11? Uh, 11, 11, yeah. Oh. 11. We used to have our own, our family, you know, Sunday school and devotion at the same time, okay. 11. So yeah. if we. When you're free, earlier. you can join. Yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. Okay. Okay. Bye bye.